Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and we are once again dealing with staff tool strategies. We're looking at staff attributes again, more specifically note head font, note shapes, and stem settings. So let's go into the staff attributes for my flute two part here. And what we're dealing with is the note head font, which is in the independent elements. And when you have something selected here, uh, essentially what it means is that the flute two part in this case will have this independent note head font. Everything else will uh, remain the same. The other piece of the video that we're looking at is the note shapes over here, and then finally the stem settings down in the items to display. But let's start with the note head font, because that's the simplest. And when you check that and then press select, uh, we get a typical font selection window in Finale. Now from here, we can literally choose any font we want, but more often than not, it's likely that you want to choose a font that's actually a music font. So instead of the maestro font here, I could choose the maestro percussion, which has a bunch of different characters. Now when I select that, nothing's going to appear to change uh, because it just so happens that the note head uh, characters are in the same slot between maestro and maestro percussion. So until you start changing things with the note shapes, uh, this won't actually do anything. But we could actually choose a completely different music font if we wanted to. In fact, I can go up here and select Jazz, which is another Finale music font, and I'll get Jazz font note heads. And you'll almost barely see a difference between the filled-in note heads, but you'll see a bigger difference in the half and whole notes uh, compared to the oboe part there. Uh, now, what won't happen is the things like the flags will not become uh, part of the jazz font, because if you're familiar with the jazz font uh, setup, you know, the flags are a jazz font. Also, the time signature, the key, the, you know, the key and everything. So it's really literally only the note heads that are, that are changing. So this is probably not the most practical way to use this. Now, again, using something like Maestro Percussion can be a little bit more practical. If I can find it again, there it is. Um, if you start using note shapes. And the, the principle behind note shapes is that when you press the settings here, we get this little window, and this will allow us to replace uh, certain um, pitches either on a scale degree at pitch for either the double whole, whole, half, or quarter note heads. And the quarter note heads is just the filled in note heads, so that would apply to eighths, sixteenths, etc. And uh, it's a pretty simple thing to do. Just select quarter, decide if you're going to do this by pitch or by scale degree. So let's say I'm going to do it by pitch, and then choose the pitch. You're choosing an individual pitch here, and then you're replacing the quarter note on D with this symbol and press select, and you'll get the symbol selection for the entire maestro percussion uh, font set. So instead of the normal um, uh, note head font, we could choose something else like, let's say, the little triangle here and press select. Now whenever I see a D on the staff, uh, a filled in D, either a quarter, eighth, or sixteenth, and whatnot, uh, it will be that triangle. And then we can choose another one. So let's say E, quarter note, and we can choose something like uh, the little, whatever that is, little half moon guy, and then we can choose F and do something else. We can choose the next one there, which is the diamond. And you can see I can keep going here. I won't uh, waste a whole lot of time doing this, but just click OK, and I will have changed those three note heads, the D, E, and F, to uh, certain certain uh, characters here. And I can keep going, G, A, B, C. And obviously, I would have to do the same for the half notes. I would have to do the same for the, uh, the whole notes and the double whole notes if I'm ever going to use those. So it can be a little tedious to go through and set these up, but if you're looking to do something like that, this is exactly how you would do it. Now, Finale has another font called Finale Alpha Font, which I'm going to find here. Where is it? Finale Alpha Alpha Notes. Sorry, Finale Alpha Notes. And this is sort of an educational set of note heads. And this is where we definitely are going to need to use the note shapes because the principle behind these alpha notes is that um, every pitch can have a character that is a note head that has a letter in it, right? So I've just chosen D for... Uh, quarter note, I believe. Yep. And so what I'm going to try and do is find the D natural um, uh, filled in note here. And you can see that this character set has, you know, filled in note heads for um, all the pitches, even the sharps and flats, um, as well as the half notes, the whole notes and everything. So we can, uh, and there's even some cute little like smiley faces and pumpkins down here and everything. Uh, so we can set up a whole set of alpha note symbols uh, in the same way that I just showed you with the Meister Percussion. Choose the E and go to E, press select. Now, incidentally, there is a uh, template in the Finale, the Setup Wizard, that uh, will use these Finale alpha notes. So this will be completely set up for you already. So you don't actually have to go through this. If you uh, can find that template in the Setup Wizard, it's pretty much done for you. 
um, but I can keep going a little bit here. And uh, again, so you have the option of doing this uh, per pitch or per scale degree. And if you're doing it per scale degree, um, let me just show you what the uh, symbol selection looks like. You'll notice that there's R, M, S, L, and T for both uh, all the whole notes, half notes, and filled in notes. And you're wondering what that is. It's Re, Mi, So, La, T. Well, where is Do and Fa? Well, the D is already a pitch, so you can just use this for Do. So D for Do, Re, Mi, the F for Fa, So, La, T. So you do have all <laughs> seven, seven uh, solfege pitches there. It just doesn't look like it immediately. Um, all right, so that's if you're going to do uh, on scale degree. Now, down here at the bottom of this file on the strings, I already set up the alpha notes for the violin one and violin two, and I've set them up in two different ways. You can see that the violin one is set as a pitch class, so you'll see D, E, let me see if I can zoom in even more so you can see that a little better, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, uh, and I even did the half notes here, and violin two is set up with solfege, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. Now, the cool thing is that, you know, you can move these notes around, obviously, and the letters will change as you change the pitches. So if I uh, transpose it down, now it says C, D, E, F, D, E, F, E, F, G, etc., and all the note heads will change because the alpha notes are pinned to the uh, specific note class, right? Now, the other thing you may notice is that I decided in this case to use F instead of F natural here. Um, you know, the reason is because you, you don't have control over... Uh, all 12 pitches in the uh, note shapes. You'll see uh, in the at pitch, you, you only have the pitch classes, so A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Um, so you can't actually choose, uh, you know, uh, you know F sharp versus F flat or whatever. Um, so you do have to make a choice. If you're never going to go outside of the key, then I probably could have used F sharp here. But uh, if I were to ever put an F natural in the piece, then that would be a problem because it would still say F sharp even though there's a natural sign in front of it. So... You just kind of have to make a choice about how you're going to do that. And in this case, I've chosen to do it this way. Uh, and also with the solfege, what's cool is that, you know, if you change the key, let's say I'm going to go to E major here, um, what you'll see is that it will still read Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, because, again, this is uh, based on scale degree, not on pitch class. Now, something else that's kind of cool and maybe a little whimsical is that the font selection dialog box here will allow you to pretty much pick any font from your system that you want. So theoretically, you could select some random text font and have you know text characters as uh, note heads if you really want to. In fact, I figured out that the Wingdings 2 has some interesting uh, characters that you can use as note heads. You can even see here there's, there's some filled in um, numbers here that you can use instead of letters from the Finale Alpha Notes. Now, when you use a normal font that's not a music font built for Finale, you do have to be careful of the size because proportionally the music font sizes in Finale is going to be very different than the text font. So you're going to choose something different here. And I fi figured out that Wingdings 2 size 9 actually works uh, fairly well for this. And when I do this, of course, I'm going to want to use the note shapes. So we can go in here and say the D and then select the character. Now, this is the Wingdings 2 uh, font set here. And you can see that I have all of these characters here. So I could choose one here. Actually, probably what I should have done is uh, scale degree one, not uh, at pitch D. So scale degree one, one, and that's for the double whole note. Let's do that for the quarter note, rather, and uh, et cetera. And then we can do scale degree two, and we can choose two, and we can go on and on and on like this, and we'll get something that says, you know, one, two, and if I had kept going, it would three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, and then I could have done the half notes as well. Um, I actually have it set up in the cello part already, so let me just do something here. I'm just going to copy and paste this here and move this up an octave. And uh, you'll see that I've, I've got those um, uh, Wingdings font there. Now, you may be noticing something right off the bat the, um, where it says 4 here. And remember, this is a copy of the bass part. That should be a G, but that's actually an A, right? Well, the issue here is when you use fonts that are not music fonts, um, the bass lines are different. So, you know, music fonts in Finale, the bass line runs through the center of the note head, but every other normal font, the bass line is the bass line of the font character. So that's why, in this case, the uh, 4 is sitting on top of the line that it's supposed to be on, not uh, crossing through it. So if you're doing something weird like this where you do want to do a font that's not a music font, you will have to deal with this. Um, there's a way to do it with the specials tool, with the uh, note head 
uh, what's that called, the note head mover tool or whatever that is. <laughs> and But you do need to right click, allow vertical positioning, and then, you know, drag this around. And then this could get very tedious trying to get these all in place, you know, one at a time. You know, fortunately, there is a uh, plugin for this. If you happen to have the JW set of plugins, there's one called JW Change. And there's a thing for note heads, vertical position. So we can actually change the vertical position. And I had figured this out for this particular font at this size. We need a vertical offset of negative, what is it, 0 0.047. Oops, negative 0 0.047. And hit apply. And now all of those note heads uh, get placed on the proper line or space. Now, the next problem exist that exists here is you may notice the stems don't exactly attach correctly. So this is where we're going to get into that last part of this uh, lesson today, uh, having to do with the stem settings. Um, now, in the stem settings, I've already talked about this top portion of this where you can set default direction, either always up, always down, and show beams or not. Um, but let's talk about the bottom portion here, which is where we're going to be able to fix things like this if we were ever to run into this scenario. So we have horizontal off offsets and vertical offsets, but we have to choose whether or not we're going to vertically offset. Um, now, again, this is, these numbers will be, you're going to have to play with these numbers, but, you know, for this Wingding 2 font size 9, the way I've got this set up, I know that my up stem uh, horizontal offset here needs to be negative 0.01, my down stem needs to be 0.01, and then I do need to use a vertical offset, offset from the note head, not from the staff. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Offset from the note head. Uh, let's see, what are my values here? Negative 0.02 and positive 0.02 for the down stems. Uh, so what I've done is I've just changed the offset of where the stem is, basically the stem connection um, you know, from the horizontal and the vertical aspect here. And we click OK. And that should produce a result that's a little bit better for this silly wingdings to uh, font set here. You can see that now my stems are pretty appropriately attached to those uh, note heads. All right, so there's a lot going on there. Uh, lots of options for you if you want to do some weird things like that. And lastly, I'm going to talk about one more thing here. I'm going to go into this uh, separate file where I have a tab staff. We're going to look at the rest of those stem settings. Now, with tab staff, um, this is a tab staff basically out of the box. So I've, you know, in Square Manager, have added a tab staff and have done nothing to it so far. And by default, you will never see stems in your tab staff. However, you can choose to uh, view stems in a tab staff just by checking the stems. And when you do this, the stems are going to be put in a certain way. They're not going to be, you know, connected to the note heads, which is really the, the fingers on the strings here. They're going to be placed sort of above the staff uh, in this particular manner. And this is set up automatically when you add the tab staff. I didn't have to do anything in stem settings. I just checked the stems, and the stem settings were already selected. But the way that Finale is doing this is um, having to do with what's going on in the stem settings. And here you can see that the use vertical offset for note head end of stems is checked, and it's offset from the staff. And then the bottom option here, use vertical offset for beam end of stems offset from staff is also checked. And there's values here for everything. So what is this exactly, and how does this work? Well, the, uh, the first one, the offset from the staff, is basically the start of the stem, or in this case, the bottom of the stem. And you can see that there's a value here of 0 0.08. If I were to change this to, let's say, 0.16, uh, what you'll see is the bottom of the stems get a little bit higher away from the staff. So basically, that value is, is you know, placing it above the staff, offset from the top of the staff line to uh, you know, that particular value. Um, now you also notice with these uh, stems on tab staff, it is selected to be always up. If I choose always down, by the way, you'll see them go uh, below. And in that case, it's using the setting from over here, negative 0 0.08681, below the, the, the uh, bottom staff line. All right? So that's sort of the idea of what's going on here. Now the bottom portion of this, uh, use vertical offset for beam end of stems offset from staff, is sort of exactly where the, um, the, the stem ends, above the staff or below the staff. And now this value, 0 0.39931, is relative, again, to the staff line. So if these two values were the, actually the same, up stem and the up stem down here, let's just do this to see what happens, 0 0.08, uh, going back to always up. 
uh, the stems will actually sort of go away, but with the, you know, with the with the flags and everything, it's it gets a little ugly. So this value here, uh, actually, it's set to zero point zero eight. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah, you can kind of see the stems are basically non-existent there. Um, so this value uh, has to be sort of higher than uh, this value here in order for them to go upwards. Uh, so again, what was that? 0.39. Uh, but we can make this larger as too. If I did something like 0.55 here, you can see that those stems will get a lot larger than they originally were. So that's what's going on with the stem settings, and that's exactly how that works when you do an offset from, uh, from stem here. Now, there's one other interesting uh, characteristic here. Like, if I'm going to go back into the guitar original guitar staff here, and I'm going to do something with the stem settings, where I'm going to use a vertical offset from note, ed, note head end of stems, but I'm going to leave it at the note head, which means that, obviously, the stem is generating from the note head. But I'm going to check the use vertical offset for beam end of stems offset from staff. Now, what this will do is it will pin the up stems or down stems, the end of it, to the top staff, no matter where the notes are. So we can click OK. And what you'll see is an interesting little scenario where the stems will never go outside of the uh, the staff itself. They're always stopping at the end of the, the staff line. And you'll notice uh, that that will cause a problem um, when the staff would normally need to be above or, you know, well above or well below the staff. So um, this is an interesting way to use it. Uh, you know, it kind of looks somewhat neat if you, you know, transpose these notes a little bit far farther down. You can see that everything's just pinning to the top uh, staff line here, but not the most practical thing to do, but it's, uh, it's a little interesting little um, side note that you can do this. So offset from note head and pin it to the, um, uh, the end of the, the staff. But you can also choose a, a, um, uh, an offset here as well. So if I choose 0.5 here, uh, the net, now you'll see all of these up stems will <laughs> kind of go to the, uh, to all the way up here. So a lot of different sometimes weird options that are available in this stem settings if you manipulate it in certain ways. All right. So I think that's it for uh, this lesson. It's a sort of a weird lesson on some esoteric kind of settings in the staff attributes, but uh, you know, that's what you've got. Now you have a really deep understanding of the staff attributes in Finale. So once again, thanks for watching. My name is Jason and uh, you know, don't forget to subscribe and yeah, I'll see you soon on the next video.